The next day, in front of Don Juan's house, a sudden gust of wind made Don Juan get up in one incredible agile jump. Damn it, the wind is looking for you. I can't buy that, Don Juan, I said laughing. I really can't. I was not being stubborn. I just found it impossible to endorse the idea that the wind had its own volition and was looking for me, or that it actually spotted us and rushed to us on top of a hill. I said that the idea of a willful wind was a view of the world that was rather simplistic. What is the wind then? He asked in a challenging tone. I patiently explained to him that the masses of hot and cold air produced different pressures and that the pressure made the masses of air move vertically and horizontally to create wind and storms. It took me a long while to explain all the details of basic meteorology. You mean that all there is to wind is hot and cold air? He asked in a tone of bafflement. I'm afraid so, I said, and silently enjoyed my triumph. Don Juan seemed dumbfounded, but then he looked at me and began to laugh uproariously. Your opinions are final opinions, he said with a tone of sarcasm. They are the last word, aren't they? For a hunter, however, your opinions are pure crap. It makes no difference whether the pressure was one or two or ten. If you would live out here in the wilderness, you would know that during the twilight, the wind becomes power. A hunter that is worth his salt knows that and acts accordingly. How does he act? He uses the twilight and that power hidden in the wind. If it is convenient to him, the hunter hides from the power by covering himself and remaining motionless until the twilight is gone and the power has sealed him into its protection like a cocoon. A hunter can stay out in the open and no puma or coyote or slimy bug could bother him. A mountain lion could come up to the hunter's nose and sniff him, and if the hunter did not move, the lion would leave. I guarantee you that. If the hunter wants to be noticed, all he has to do is stand on a hilltop at the time of the twilight, and the power will nag him and seek him all night. Therefore, if a hunter wants to travel at night, or if he wants to be kept awake, he must make himself available to the wind. Therein lies the secret of great hunters, to be available and unavailable at the precise turn of the road. I felt a bit confused and asked him to recapitulate his point. Don Juan very patiently explained that he had used the twilight and the wind to point out the crucial importance of the interplay between hiding and showing oneself. You must learn to become available and unavailable. As your life goes now, you are unwittingly available at all times. I protested. My feeling was that my life was becoming increasingly more and more secretive. He said I had not understood his point and that to be unavailable did not mean to hide or be secretive, but to be inaccessible. Let me put it in another way. It makes no difference to hide if everyone knows you are hiding. Your problems right now stem from that. When you are hiding, everyone knows you are hiding, and when you are not, you are available for everyone to take a poke at you. I was beginning to feel threatened and hurriedly tried to defend myself. Don't explain yourself. There is no need. We are all fools, all of us, and you could not be any different. At one time in my life, I, like you, made myself available, over and over again, until there was nothing left of me for anything but crying. And that I did, just like yourself. I told him that his point was bypassing me. I truly could not understand what he meant by being available. You must take yourself away. You must retrieve yourself from the middle of the road. Your whole entire being is there. Thus, it is of no use to hide. You would only imagine you were hidden. Being in the middle of the road means that everyone passing by watches your comings and goings. His metaphor was interesting, but at the same time, it was also obscure. You're talking in riddles, I said. Then he began to hum. I knew that when Don Juan hummed a Mexican tune, he was about to clobber me. Whatever happened to your blonde friend, that girl that you used to really like? 